Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted with one guy on the camera, Archbishop <laughs> Foley Beach. We're at the end of GAFCON 3 and the world is waking up on the uh, east coast, central coast and west coast of America to discover you're now um, an elected head of GAFCON. Is this true? <laughs> hey Kevin, uh, sort of true. Uh, basically, uh, we're in the midst of a leadership change, and uh, the primates uh, elected me as the uh, new chairman of the GrafCon Primates Council, and uh, we've elected Ben Kwashi as the new general secretary. Uh, ben will take uh, over his role beginning January 2019, and between now and then, we'll both be strategizing um, on what this means to both of us and, and, the, and for GrafCon. And so you're replacing... I'm replacing um, Archbishop Nicholas Oko. And Kwashi is replacing? Peter Jensen. Okay. And I will actually officially begin my duties at the beginning of the next primates meeting, which is next April. Uh, but there'll be a lot of planning that'll have to go into that meeting. And uh, so that's actually when it'll technically happen. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. You and I have conversations about your friendship with Justin Welby. Uh, send emails once in a while, maybe a phone call here and there. I don't know about Christmas cards. Not sure how Actually, the Christmas cards are there. <laughs> okay, okay. And um, you have now been uh, elected to the largest Anglican body uh, in the world. Uh, yeah. And you're representing the Orthodox Anglican Church, where he's representing a smaller, maybe a branch of it now. Um, what is... Canterbury is supposed to think. Which, is there a message in this for them? I don't know uh, if there's a message. I just I think the message that we've had here is that we're going to be about the gospel of Jesus Christ and standing for biblical teaching and and morality. And we hope he will join us in that. Uh, I think this body represents about 50 of the 70 million Anglicans, depends on which numbers you use as how many Anglicans, is it 60 or 80, sure. but we'll, we'll go with the lower numbers, 50 of, of the 70 million Anglicans around the world, and our hope would be that, that he would join us. You know, one of my surprises is that he wasn't here. Um, I, if, if the largest gathering of Anglican leaders was meeting somewhere, and I was the Archbishop of Canterbury, I would think that it would be good to at least show you cared uh, about what, they're care, what they care about. And so I, I was really surprised. Um, I think a lot of people were dumbfounded that he was not here in some way. Now there's people who wanted to be here who couldn't be here, uh, Meniere and East. Um, what, what happened with that? We had some visa issues. The South Sudanese couldn't get visas. The Sudanese couldn't get visas. Um, and Archbishop Manier, uh, because of the change of the embassy, uh, their government is uh, not very happy about that. And so uh, when they found out he was coming to Jerusalem, um, they held him up. And uh, he missed his plane, and uh, one thing led to another, and he was not able to come. Gratefully, he, he greeted the assembly or sent messages to the, the assembly gathered here. So, a member of the Global South, who originally the Global South were not real big on GAFCON, but more and more, and what I hear from the grapevine is, they're kind of looking that you guys are the future. Well, I think what's... I think the be better way to say it is we're standing for the same type of Anglicanism, the historic teaching of the church. Um, and, but our roles are different. Um, and, and we have different, the, the Global South is a structure of the Anglican Communion and its purpose is different from a revival, renewal, reform movement. I mean, if you were to say two things that came out of this meeting, one would be the emphasis on evangelism and reaching the world for Christ. The other is the need for reforming the Anglican Communion away from colonial structures and a colonial mindset that uh, uh, limits the participation of those around the world. I've looked at your schedule on the, on the ACNA website. Your calendar is full, you travel all the time. Is this going to add to that travel, this new role? I, I'm sure it will on some level. I'm going to have to reorient some things. Unfortunately, I'll have some time 
to uh, reflect and strategize with our team in the ACNA. I mean, the bottom line for me as well is I don't want to hurt the Anglican Church in North America, so I've got to make sure that what I do with GAFCON uh, enhances the ministry of the Anglican Church in North America and enables us to do what we're called to do, which is reach North America with the transforming love of Jesus Christ, not hurt it. So I've got to be able to provide the leadership and surround myself with the appropriate leaders in the ACNA to accomplish that vision. So we're going to have to look at that, but just to be real honest. And um, I, I was talking to our bishops about this, and I said, you know, we've grown so much. Uh, their ministries have grown so much. We need to re-look at how we're doing things anyway. It's just time to stop and reflect and uh, re reform what we're doing, if that makes any sense, as far as our priorities. Yeah. 54 countries are represented here. Uh, one day we hope maybe 100, 180. Yes. It would be nice. What is GAFCON going to do to, uh, along with the networks, reach the rest of the world? Well, one of the things you may have noticed is we, we appointed a new uh, general secretary, but we also appointed deputy secretaries for different regions. And, and one of our hopes for the deputy secretaries is they'll build relationships and help people understand the message of GAFCON and uh, not the, uh, the fake news of GAFCON that, that tends to be reported in some places, who we really are because uh, most people around the Anglican Communion reflect and believe what we believe, but are not being allowed to in some quarters. So we're going to reach out, care for people, minister to people, listen to people, but mainly share the gospel and make Anglican disciples. All right, let's, uh, let's finish up here. Archbishop referred to Gafcon as a ginger group. In honesty, maybe he could have got away with that for GAFCON 1 in Jerusalem. GAFCON 2, no way, he had to show up. GAFCON 3, he just reverted to this idea again. Um, obviously, you're not a ginger group. You're the largest Anglican entity out there. Um, what purports of, Ang uh, of GAFCON 4? What, what are we looking for? Are we going to be in America? Are we going to be in Sydney? I, I you know, we actually... Archbishop Kwashi and I just started raising that question <laughs> and talking about Let's it. Pull on, him out here. Let's we, get the we, we were we were on the bus uh, yesterday and yeah. uh, we were just throwing out some places, but we we really got to back up and just uh, see where we need to have it. I mean, that's the other. I mean, you've got to think of several things when you have an event like this. One is cost. What Atlanta does it cost? Cheap. Atlanta's cheap, but to get to Atlanta <laughs> is it's very costly. Sure. Um, and when you talk about, I mean, how many delegates did we have from Africa alone sure. or from Asia? I mean, that's a large number, to, and the cost to get to Atlanta would be really tough. So cost is one thing. The other is passports, uh, visas, being able to get into the country. And so, uh, so those two things, I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll have it in London. I mean, I'm just being funny, no, but, I, but I, 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 have, I have no idea um, at to this pick point. You're going to off the floor here, but I think London would be a great idea. But the, uh, I mean, the process we'll go through is, used, I mean, what's happened in the past is the general secretary's office and staff work on ideas and they bring it to the primates and, and we approve it. And so that's what we'll do this time. All right. Any message for uh, GAFCON and the ACNA that you want to, to deliver as Ab we hang up? Absolutely. Uh, we heard this week that our task is to proclaim Christ faithfully to the nations. And Jesus said that we were to go and make disciples. And we tend to leave it there. Go and make disciples of all nations. We'll even say that. But we forget the next part. When Jesus said, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. There's more to the commands of Jesus than to love one another. He taught so much on so many different things. And that's what we need to be doing, is making Anglican disciples, followers of Jesus, who observe what he taught. So let's go do it. Let's stand up for the Lord. Let's share the Lord. And let's reach the world for Jesus Christ. God bless you.